to Dr. Jude Montague. Okay, so yes, I am Dr. Jude Montague. Uh, Tim insisted I use my official doctorness, I think to impress, I don't know, someone. Uh, but I am a doctor, I guess my PhD is in film history and uh, media history. And so I was really excited when I came to Hastings and saw the sign at the top of the hill, uh, home of television. And it's 100 years ago, is it not? that Loki Baird was um, prowling these streets and inventing television in his bedroom and then in a laboratory and yeah. So what is television? Yeah, it's weird shit. It's weird shit because, I mean, I used to work in uh, Reuters in the television archive and um, even my colleague on the desk didn't actually know what telly was and I sort of didn't and I sort of do so I think most people are a bit like this because um, she was saying oh everybody threw away all the old films that were used for television and I was trying to explain that television doesn't early television especially it doesn't actually record anywhere unless you record it, because it is the transmission of a visual image from one place to another place. But it doesn't involve the recording of that image unless you record it. So a lot of people don't get that. And, um, but one person that totally got that, even before it existed, how clever is that, is John Logie Baird. And he did invent telly. I will fight the people who uh, Tim put out uh, photos of other places around the world that invented telly because I think he did invent the television and I think he invented it here and I know it actually, let's lose the think and um, yeah, well, I suppose it's only from books and stuff like that and photos um, that I know it but he did. Um, so who is Stooky Bill and why are they medicated under socks? Uh, Logie Bear is one of these guys he says, I must invent something, and he invented stuff. He, like, loved inventing. He was from Scotland, was he not? He was. He was from Helensburgh near Glasgow. And he had some, he was experimenting right from an early age. It was very cold, and he got sick a lot, and he didn't like being out on the sports field, sort of dying and shivering like you do at sort of uh, minor places that are run like public schools, although it wasn't a public school, he wasn't a public school boy, he was the son of a reverend who had a very sarcastic and dour sense of humour and he lived in a place called The Lodge, which was sort of given to them for living in as a sort of reverend's family. Now it's quite posh, I think it was on the market a couple of years ago for 600,000, but it, um, yeah, cold drafty childhood with curtains. Uh, you can see him here in an early experiment. Not quite sure. Involving a book. This experiment may be something like hitting someone on the head and then running away and seeing what happens, maybe. <laughs> this is a real proper experiment, but a, a real thing. <clears throat> More than an experiment. He provided the electric light for the lodge for his father's house. Um, well, it's with belong to them all, but the father was very much at the senior Victorian patriarchalness of being head of the household. And he said yes, so somehow he allowed his son, but who wouldn't, you know, clever boy, to um, generate electricity in 1901 and 1902 for the house, replacing that awful gas lighting. But, um, uh, Logie, as his wife called him later on, though I think he was mostly called John. John, he, um, he, uh, yeah, he, so he had the electric light, he was providing the light, it was all working, everybody was like, oh, oh, isn't he a genius, sort of maybe, or isn't he a bit annoying, but, and then it sounded a bit loud. Uh, but one day he sort of lost interest quite quickly and um, didn't, forgot to turn the light on and his dad fell down the stairs and then he was really cross and he went back to gaslight after that. Um, so that's what happened. Um, one of his early 
experiments with everybody loved Alexander Graham Bell. You know, everybody who invents is Scottish. So Alexander Graham Bell. So he invented the telephone and um, John Logie Baird was absolutely, you know, wow, I'd be like Alexander, you know, that bloke who invented the telly. Scottish, I'm Scottish, I'm doing it. Um, my family's Scottish, by the way. Um, so so they, they have a thing. This is just an example of how easy it is to, to invent the telephone. Basically, you get a, a tin can, drill a hole in it. You have a bit of a string or wire that goes to another tin can, just like this. You've got to keep it taut for this experiment, for this to work. And it amplifies the voice from one place to another. It's got to be taut. Um, taut, as in tight, as in stiff, yeah. So he, um, he did that and he, he, he spoke to his school friends. I don't know how they did it actually, because if you look at the lodge, there's no other houses nearby, but apparently he connected him and his school friends all together with a system based on this very, this very primitive tele uh, telephone <laughs> technique um, with wires. But unfortunately, one day the, um, the postman was cycling home and um, <laughs> he hit his... He hit his, his head on the wire and fell off his bike and he was convinced that it was the fault of the tele telephone company. So he wrote complaining, he was like, oh, there's, oh, it's just this turns off so disgraceful, disgusting, these new wires everywhere. So he didn't know, of course, so, you know, Logie Baird is like, oh, it was me, hope nobody tells, you know, because I know it's me. But Pat, his dad, the Reverend, came in useful here because he, they had a bottle of whiskey together and ha 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 so that was good his dad came in for him so he wasn't a bad dad really but he was a bit stiff and a bit you know it was a bit like that i think when um, he got to be a teenager logie bear said to his dad uh, that you know he, he lost his the religion he said you know i'm sorry dad i could not be um, uh, enough of a hypocrite to be going to the church you know, I, I don't think I could do that level of hypocrisy. And his dad said, oh, John, I think you would have no worries about that. <laughs> so, there, the, that's the family came from. So, oops, let's not quite go there yet. A little hint of it. Loki Baird, he always had a problem with his feet. He, he didn't like his feet. He didn't mind them, but he didn't like them to get ill and sick, because he was sick. So he thought that if your socks get a bit wet from B.O., that you're, you might get sick from your socky, socky wocky nurse, right? So, he used to change his socks a few times a day and he even took to wearing paper bags over his feet, underneath his socks. And um, this was a lovely undersock thing, right? So, oh, I forgot to say, this is him at work. He wasn't very happy at work. He liked to work for himself. He wasn't, yeah, he looks a bit cross, doesn't he? He didn't like working for other people, really. He liked to invent things, as we're seeing. As we're seeing, so he's inventing now. So he's inventing something for his sock to keep his, his health up with his paper socks. So that wasn't very good for manufacturing. So when he, he thought, I must invent something, I must invent something. But the paper sock wasn't really a goer. So he got the borax out of his mum's kitchen, sprinkled it on the socks and discovered the medicated sock. And that's it. And he called them, because he'd like it, he called the Baird Undersock, you see, for, soldier's foot, for the soldier's foot. He didn't go to war because he was too sick, so he stayed at home sprinkling borax on socks instead. <laughs> which somebody's got to do it, because somebody must invent the things that the soldiers need. So here he is. But this, the reason it became such a big hit, a relatively big hit, let's say, in Glasgow, the Baird Undersock, was because he hit on the bright solution of getting women to wear sandwich boards, saying the bear undersock. And this was such a novelty that everybody took pictures for the local papers of women in sandwich boards. And, and of course, it said the bear undersock. So we got loads of um, free publicity. So 1918 in Glasgow, a great uh, time for women. With new employment opportunities provided by John Logie Baird. Amazing. So he hasn't he made two grand in the end, a huge amount of money. This is the invention that really um, was his best earner. Uh, most of the others didn't really make much dosh. 
um, at this point, at this early point in his inventing career, I must invent something. So, but anyway, you know, you're a young man, you, would be, you know, he's given up his job sitting on that stool in the factory, he didn't like that. So, you know, how are you going to get a love, a love life? You know, how are you going to support, like, a, 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 you know, the woman of his dreams? Oh, where's he going to find a woman of his dreams with similar interests? So, a library. So we went to a library in Glasgow and found a lovely lady that they, they just clicked it and it was fantastic. But then, oh shit, I need even more money because women need money and I, my, what am I going to, yeah. So he decided, his friend, one of his friends wrote to him and said, it's brilliant in the hot tropical countries, so you must come here. And so he went to Trinidad to make some money. And um, yeah, so he didn't do very well because he got ill straight away with dysentery, which is just like John Logie bad. So he was sick quite a lot. So we, and then he said, oh no, so he's spending all his undersock money. And um, he went, he, this isn't the one, but there is a picture a bit like it. I, I didn't have the picture and I made it. So um, he, he did a factory in the jungle. Because while he was lying on his sick bed, he got a lot of ideas. And he thought, there's a lot of fruit here, like mangoes and, and pineapple and uh, uh, fruit, right? For tropical, for tropical fruit, the stuff that, that, you know, is in the orange juice um, conglomerates that you buy from the shop. So he, he got a big factory thing and he got a big cauldron and he bought a big old uh, bathtub and he used it like a, a cooking pot and uh, got a local youth, uh, Ram Roop, his name was, who hasn't gone down in history, but he was really good for Logie Baird because he was, the, he was stirring the jam pot for Logie Baird, making the jam, and um, like pineapple jam. You don't see it a lot, I don't really know why. Um, so he, um, he was stirring the jam, but then this happened. And then this happened, oh no, that didn't happen today. <laughs> But anyway, so all these wasps and things came and they, they all dived right into the jam pot and died. So it was like a jam, sticky jam fly pot. And he, um, yeah, so it, anyway, some, he managed to get back to England finally at some point without any money, but with a bit of jam that he sold, but it wasn't very good jam. But, um, but he got a bit, a bit, little bit of money, fine. Anyway, by the time he got back, then this happened. The woman he had loved, as it, John Loki Baird, coming through. So he, she had got married while he was in Trinidad with the jam and the ram roop and, and, the, and the grasshoppers and scorpions. That she'd got married, he came in and it's like, oh no. But he wasn't a man to give up easily because he must invent something. So he invented the love triangle. And, um, he, and he, they worked out a kind of deal where they shared they shared her at different times, or the men, or, or, or she shared them. Anyway, it worked sort of for them. Anyway, so meanwhile, invention is progressing apace, and the valve is amplifying. Ampli there's, new, um, there's new inventions in amplification that are making television possible, yeah? So, valves, valve, and then. Um, so yeah, the valve is uh, the thermionic valve invented by John Fleming, a Scot man, and um, the American guy Lee Forrest. He um, does this thing with it. He puts a grid in the middle so that it amplifies stuff. So you get power coming in, and then there's this grid thing, and it spreads it all out, and it makes it bigger. So, um, so what happened after that, they all started fighting over patents, but basically the scene is set for television on Hastings, and um, so he came down, John Logie Baird, he got sick, he was in London, he was dying on his deathbed, and they said, you know, you were not going to make it if you don't go to Hastings, so he came, he came here to get better, and he, 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 he came to see his his friend from school, who was called Methy, which is short for Mephistopheles. Now his real name was Guy Robinson. I don't know why he was called Methy, apart from Mephistopheles. But it's a nice name, isn't it? I quite like it. Um, so he, this is actually where he did his first successful transfer of telly with wires at Linton Crescent in his bedroom. But he needed a bigger space, really, than his bedroom. He needed to. Oh, 
I've had done the jam pudding, I think I've got this wrong way around. Oh, let's go to the jam pudding. So, this is where he decided to invent telly. He went for a walk on Fairlight. And um, it's a very good place to think, isn't it? And look out to see. And he came back and said to his friend Mephi, he had a pudding in Hastings with Mephi and said, I'm going to invent telly. And, <laughs> and um, Mephi said, you're crazy. What? And then, but by the end of the pudding, he'd won him round. Um, so, he, so he had a go at Hastings. I must invent something. So that's what he did. What was next in the picture? Oh, here's the telly he's inventing. He's inventing telly now. So we went in the shops, and Hastings was very good to him because he went in the shops, the ordinary shops, and he'd get things like uh, lights and uh, it's copper and biscuit tins and stuff. And, people, and he didn't have any money, so uh, not much money. So people would, the shopkeepers are very nice, they would give him stuff to help him and then they would say, don't come back. But they were very nice because they could give him some stuff. And I've heard, um, I have heard anecdotes of this as well in the pub from my friends who, whose families remember all this. So, it's amazing, really. Oh, did you know this bloke? If you're a historian of my period, you like this. William de Lucour lived around here. I didn't know that. That's really rather that's sort of exciting. He wrote spy, sort of xenophobic stories. Anyway, never mind about him. He's not really he's in this game. He's not in the television game. Not like John Logie Bear. We'd better whiz along. So John Logie Bear just thought we'd have the uh, feet again, because he did have some other ideas about feet. He had an idea about pneumatic shoes. I don't know if anybody had tried that, but he, he'd seen like pneumatic tyres, you know, where the, there's a sort of air cushion to uh, help you not get uh, better suspension of, on your cars and things. So we thought if he blew up a, a bag and put it in his feet, in his boots, he could walk along with it. But apparently some of the Hastings young uh, gentlemen ran after him and shouted at him and he wobbled and, and he thought this idea needs further development. <laughs> so he, anyway, he, he managed to get some money after a bit to uh, sort of advertising, went to the Queen's Arcade where the lovely chocolate shop is and uh, we know about this. This is where he continued his development of the television dream. So yeah, but unfortunately he, he Getting some money is not always a good thing. And he got so excited, he wired together loads and loads of um, bicycle lamps in order to increase the voltage, which is what you need, because voltage is like power. It gives the, so things can be made bigger and brighter. And as we saw, it was a valve. It's this extra power, this extra amplification, this extra voltage that makes the transmission of information more possible. And um, unfortunately, he... <laughs> He didn't wear gloves. Um, but if you see a lot of, if you go to the archive and read the letters about it, you can see that people say, come on, uh, John, if you do it again, could you at least wear some rubber gloves? Because apparently he wouldn't have hurt himself if he had worn rubber gloves. So he was bothered about his feet, but his hands were what took the brunt in the end uh, of the voltage. So what is telly? He, he, he had a mechanical telly, which is done with these spinning discs that we've seen with holes in. They selected bits of light, um, and then uh, so they get selected, and then they amplified. After Hastings, he went to London, to Bar Italia. It was not Bar Italia at that time. He did not have coffee. He carried on inventing telly, and um, that's where they, they, really, they often say that's the home of telly. That's why people were difficult to to transmit by telly, so he used a ventriloquist dummy whose name was Stooky Bill. He, I think it was called, he called it Stooky Bill. I don't know if its original name was Stooky Bill, but um, that's the name that John Logie Baird gave it. Stooky Bill is a close-up of a Stooky Bill type, if not the original. This is in the Science Museum, and you can see the holes in the disc for letting in bits of light it's from Stooky Bill in order to get a a selected image that could then be transmitted. That's Telly. There he is, Stooky Bill. He's got two Stooky Bills there, hasn't he? Don't you think? Oh, I'm kind of trying to work this out. He's got two. Are they talking to each other? What's that about? Because he doesn't need two, does he? That's because that, his early Telly really didn't, wasn't really good at having two things, really, because it, it, um, it only had a very small area that it, it could identify for the transmission. This was more the kind of 
stuff that we're talking about, the early telly. And some people say it didn't, wasn't really very good, and that's why we went on to electronic TV, which was invented in, in America by, um, by a farmer. Oh, he had demonstrated it in Selfridges, if you've been to Selfridges, in the top, very top of Selfridges. And um, he, he says it's very lucky that people didn't realise that these really giant spinning discs could have kind of come off and probably sort of like smashed everything up. But fortunately they didn't, so he wasn't always unlucky. <laughs> so yeah, oh, more, more of him, more of his lovely, he's, he did... Um, he did amazing stuff. Look, there it is, television going across the sea to America. How amazing is that? Using the John Logie Baird system of mechanical television. He loved to put his name on it, the Baird televisor. And so it did work, it did work. But in the end, the, uh, I don't want to go into the um, fight with the BBC, but he didn't get on with Logie Baird. Uh, Logie Baird and John Lord Reith, head of BBC, uh, not um, a happy story there really. Oh look, what's coming up on Doctor Who, if you're a Doctor Who person, they're going to use Stooky Bill. Sorry, I should have said them um, Apparently, we think, in the fan forums, we think it's going to be Stooky Bill and Logie Baird are going to be part of Doctor Who next season um, in some way. So this is the American guy, Philo Farnsworth. Philo Farnsworth, he had a farm and apparently, this is really weird, I don't really quite get, oh, I kind of get it. He had a um, uh, you know, we saw, this is the story, this, look at this, right, it, it said that they had, that they were, they had a field and then the tractor went on the field and it went this way and it was harvesting the crop, you see, so it could harvest the whole thing and apparently he thought, after he saw this, he thought, oh, that's really good if I had an electronic scanning system in order to take an image from one place to another, it could, it could scan it just like that combine harvester is harvesting that field with the lines like that. I don't know how he got from that to that. I think he must have already been interested in, tel in the electronic sides. So, lots of diagrams, very clever people. Wow, um, here he is. So he did invent the electronic TV and that's what came the TV that we all know and recognise in terms of the main period of TV and the 20th century. Oh, yeah, so it was that. So Logie Baird lost. He had bad luck, didn't he? Oh, poor Logie. Fought so hard. He kept telling everyone his TV and doing it. But then, um, yeah, it's a, in the end it was this. It wasn't, it wasn't Logie Baird's big spinning discs. It was this. But what happened was the moon came in and, and, and he was dead by this point, Logie Baird. But he had some, he had some good post, is it po po posthumous, posthumous look. So his television got taken to the moon, his television cameras. It is an example of how sometimes an older technological solution can be used for a new purpose. And when they went to the moon, and it's very controversial now because there are so many, and how many are here, I wonder. People that think the moon landing didn't take place and that the television is fake. And one of the reasons why people sometimes think that it's odd is because they used um, a Logie Baird mechanical TV for the camera, so it's a very low resolution, a very slow scan resolution uh, colour version of his early telly that, uh, that took it. And so sometimes people say, oh, the astronauts are see-through, it's because it's refresh, refreshing very slowly, so therefore the pictures are overlapping a bit more. This is the, the Apollo camera, or a version of it, because they actually left the Apollo camera on the moon because they couldn't bring it back because they wanted to bring moon rock, so they left the equipment there afterwards. So, um, but this is something like it with the discs. See, see the, that's really the filters. And it's, um, it's obviously developed a lot from this point of, of view, and maybe a mechanical Television could have had a future, but um, you have to put a lot of money into development anyway, and uh, he did lose out on that. And I think we could perhaps just have a little, a little moment. A, a little, a little clip. Is that the? Uh... Yeah, let's just, okay. just see we'll do, a little bit because it is about telly, and then we'll just just yeah. do. Um, we'll do that. Talk, talk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, talk. Yeah, right. Great.
<laughs> Doing a good job there, Tim. This is on film, not on telly, can I point out? So shall I say, I wanted to see a bit of the moon TV, because everybody wants to go to the moon. I know, I was supposed to close that down, so no, I shouldn't have kept talking, I've talked with it. Maybe it's, it's all gone wrong. <laughs> that's slowly bad, you know, and I think that's sometimes why people don't think that the moon landing TV actually took place, is because it was Logie bad. He has a bit of a curse about him, and, he's, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, it's... If, if only they'd taken Philo Farnsworth's electronic TV to the moon, then it would have been all right, wouldn't it? But they went with the curse of John Logie Beard. Finish now, what? <laughs> Montague, Montague. Save the question. Save the question.